Hi everyone, my name is Kayla. I'm a graphic designer who lives in New Jersey. You guys may know me as Kenny Beats from the... Some of you may know me as Kbok on the Kenny Beats Discord. I won fourth place on one of Kenny Beats art battles and today I'm going to show you how I created that piece in Photoshop. Thank you guys for the support. Thank you for voting me into top five. I appreciate all the love. Thank you so much. All right, let's jump right in. First things first, here is the art sample that everyone who participated in the art battle got. Um, it's this pretty cool composition. The challenge was to create something uh, visually interesting with this art sample. So here's how I did it. First, we start with a 3000 by 3000 um, artboard on Photoshop and set it to RGB because we're working in a digital space. And I like to use an 8x8 grid to kind of keep me uh, within boundaries and like have a very balanced composition. And then I'm going to start with the subject matter. So let me zoom out a bit and then I'm going to pull this image that I found on unsplash.com. They aren't sponsoring me, but it's this awesome website that you could get free photography, free stock footage for your work. Um, I highly recommend it because everything is high quality and it's free. You don't have to pay for a thing. Shouts out to Ioni Host for taking this photograph right here. What we wanna do next is cut her out of the background. So select the layer and then just hit Command J because you always wanna have like a backup photo in case anything happens while you're working. Select your layer, go to select subject, and then Photoshop does a pretty good job of cutting out the subject from its background. But then you notice like we still have a little bit of the background coming out of her hair and the ears kind of cut off. So to clean that up, I like to go to select and select and mask. Once you're in this preview, you can kind of see like what you have selected against the background. And of course, we want to kind of take that hair out of the background more. And you can use this refine edge brush tool here. Go over the edges of the hair where it meets the background to get that nice feathering effect that you would naturally get from hair. So just like that. We also want to bring in more of this ear because right now it's getting cut off. Take the brush tool and do a few clicks like that. Nothing crazy. Once you're happy with the selection, you could just hit OK. And then you're back into regular view. Everything is marqueed. Hit mask. And we have our subject out of the background like that. So I'm going to duplicate this layer by hitting Command J. Bottom layer is going to be called body and then the top one, head. What we want to do is cut a piece of her head out so that it's floating above her forehead like we have in the final piece and how we have it in the art sample. You have this cool cutout in the forehead with this space imagery floating above it. Hide the head layer. Look at what we're doing with the body layer. So we're going to select this elliptical marquee tool and just click and drag to the point that you like the angle, that it matches the perspective of our subject, because we want to show like the cutout of the forehead. So I kind of like this angle right here. Make sure your mask is selected. And we want to cut out the top of her head because this is a body layer. So to do that, we're going to fill what we have in this ellipse with black. And black is our foreground color. So you hit Option Delete and boom, her head's gone. And then we kind of want to do the same with our head layer, but just the opposite. So you're going to hit Shift Command I to invert the selection. So now you see instead of this ellipse being selected, it's everything around it. Select the mask and just hit Option Delete to fill it with black. And boom, we have the head. Once you have the head and body cut out, position them to be more centered. We kind of just want to look at this visually. So I'm going to bring her to the left so that her nose and eyes are kind of more to the center of the composition than anything else. And then I'm going to bring her down to about there. 
and just select the head and bring it up because we're going to fill that space with our planets and all that jazz. The next thing we want to do is kind of adjust the levels of the lighting. I kind of want to bring the reds more into our color scheme just to give it a bit more pop, more contrast. So you're going to go to Curves Adjustment Layers, Red Channel, and around the mid area, just bring it up a little bit to bring those reds out, contrast nicely with the blues. Create a clipping mask over the head layer and then duplicate it clipping mask over the body layer so that the curves aren't going to affect anything in the background. Select everything that we have, group them, and name it portrait. Now we want to create the hole inside her head. So we're going to take our ellipse tool, again, click and drag from edge to edge. Going to take our eyedropper tool and just kind of eye drop something that would look like her skin tone. And then use the transform tool to kind of fit it around her head. And then you want to do the same for basically the shadow inside her head. So you're going to hit Command J to duplicate our layer. And for this one, we want to fill it something darker to create that shadow and just scale it down. And again, just transform it to kind of fit it how you like it. And then just to clean up our ellipse shape here, we're going to create a mask, use our brush tool, kind of bring that all the way down, hardness all the way up, bring our opacity up a bit, and then kind of go in and just clean up the edges so that it goes with her hair. Yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect because all of this is going to be hidden by the space objects that we're putting inside. That looks good to me. And I'm just going to group these ellipses and call it cut head hole. Cool. Okay, so now that we have our portrait all ready, we want to put in our space objects in between her head here. So I'm going to pull up our art sample image. And what we want to do is cut out that half circle right here. So I'm going to make a copy of this just for a backup. Bring it back. And then take our image, use the magnetic lasso tool, and then start clicking on one end and just slowly dragging so that we can make that selection. All right, so we have our marquee. Let's mask it. Um, I do kind of want to clean it up a bit, so I'm just going to go into our mask with our brush tool and just kind of paint away any unwanted parts that don't look very smooth. So yeah, just like that. And then we're going to go ahead and scale our image so that it fits around the bottom part of the head. Yep, just like that. And then I'm going to bring this layer behind our portrait. Cool. Let me bring the opacity down by, let's bring it to 88%. And then the next thing I'm going to do is create this color overlay so that it has that purple sort of feeling to it. So I'm going to add a new layer. Um, I have this purple selected. I'm going to use our paintbrush tool and just click. And what I'm going to do is set a clipping mask to our dome shape and set the blending mode to color burn. So now we have like that purple overlay going on. And bring the opacity down to like 90, 80%. I'll do 90. And that is our space brain. So I'm going to just rename this layer to brain and then take both layers, create
create a group, call it Space Brain, and it should be good to go. Now let's work on the gradients that we're going to put into our background. So I'm going to open a new layer and get our gradient tool by hitting G. Click over here and we can manage our gradient in this dialog box. So I like this purple on the left side set to 100%. And then on the right we have our teal color. And let's set it to 20%. And then we could just click and drag to how we like our gradient. So something like that works for me. And then I'm just going to duplicate this layer so that it's a little more intense in the center and then duplicate it one more time. And we're going to scale this down just like that and turn it to that angle move it up so that we're framing our subject's face. Okay, so that looks good to me. And now we want to add a bit of a grain effect. So I'm going to take one of our bottom layers and just copy them to the top of all of them. And then just hit dissolve and set our fill to 20 to make the effect less intense. And that is our gradient background. Now I'm going to just group all our layers, call it background, and we're good to go. Now we want to add the word visions going up and down in our background. So what I'm going to do is create a duplicate of our sample and put it all the way to the front so that we could see what we're working with. And I want to straighten out this image so that Visions is kind of more aligned horizontally. So I'm just going to tilt it slightly and then take our marquee tool and select out the word. Okay, so once you're happy with the selection, just hit mask and then we're going to invert it by selecting the layer hitting command I. So now our colors are opposite. Now what I'm going to do is scale this up, make sure our guides are on, and scale this up to whatever width that you're happy with. And what I'm going to do is create a few duplicates so that we have multiple versions of this word just going up and down in our background. And now we want to even out the amount of space in between our layers. So all you have to do is select the layers that we just copied and go up here to distribute vertically. And now we have an even amount of space between each of our layers. Now to put this behind in our background, I'm going to first merge them so that they're just one image and then open up our background folder put it above all of our gradient layers, and then set the blending mode to lighten so that we have this pretty cool stencil effect going on. And then just adjust. So I want you to be able to read the full word visions in the center so that S is kind of peeking out more, just like that. Cool. So now we have our background all finished. Now the next thing I'm going to do is add those floating orbs and stars to kind of create that outer space feeling around her head. So let's take one of our images, this really cool orb one, and I actually found this image on pexels.com, again another free website where you could find um, stock imagery, stock footage, and shouts out to Rostislav Uzunov for creating this image here, which I'm using today, you're going to take your elliptical marquee tool and kind of just drag from the center. Just to get like a nice clean circular selection and then mask it out. And that's your first orb. Now let's just scale it down. to about this size and put it somewhere near her head, just like that. 
And then what I'm going to do is change the color so that it blends in more with our purple and teal going on here. So let's add an adjustment layer for our curves. And what I'm going to do is bring up the blues quite a bit. Bring the greens up a little bit because we kind of want to make this orb more on the teal side. And then I'm going to bring the reds down like that and go to our RGB channel and just brighten up the midtones uh, just slightly like that and then create a clipping mask over our orb and perfect. So we're going to repeat this process for the other two orbs. Let's just duplicate what we have already like that. I'm going to turn this one just so that it differs slightly from the one we already have created. Let's move it to about this location. And then this one, I kind of want to have more of a darker blue and purple contrast going on. So I'm going to reset this clipping mask and go to our reds channel and kind of create this nice S curve like that. Go into our greens, bring that down just a little bit. And then bring up the blues. Go to our RGB channel, lighten it just a bit, and that looks great. And then I'm going to repeat the process one more time. So let's create one more orb. And then this one I kind of want to be more pink. So let's go to our curves, reset it, and bring up our reds. Blues too. And we're taking the greens down. And then in our RGB channel, let's lighten that quite a bit. And then just go into your channels and edit them so that they're exactly how you want them. So something like that works for me. And I'm just going to call this one pink, this one blue, and then our teal one group everything, call this one orbs. And now I'm going to add our stars so that it kind of brings in more of a dimensional um, spatial feeling to our composition. So I'm going to bring in one more photo. Again, another one that I've gotten from unsplash.com. This one was created by Chirag Nayak. Uh, shouts out to you for creating these stars. So you just place the image in. And what we want to do is only see the stars and none of the background. So I'm going to turn the blending mode from this image. First, let me duplicate it. Set our blending mode to lighten. And then you only really see the stars coming out. Scale it however you like. Kind of want them spread out. Just like that. And then I'm going to take a mask, use our brush tool to take out anything that we don't want to see. I want to get rid of most of the stars that are covering the brain. And I don't want the stars as concentrated as they are. So I'm just going to poke around and delete some of them, especially on her face. So whenever you're happy with the amount of stars you have, then we're good to move on to the eyes. And that's our last and final step of the piece. So I'm going to rename this layer stars. And then what I want to do is kind of recolor her eyes to be purple and make them really bright so that it looks like she's having this crazy vision and her eyes are just lighting up. So I'm going to create a new curves adjustment layer. 
and we want to go really extreme with how we adjust it. So let's go to our blue channel and really bring up those blues. Go to our reds and bring up the red. And take our greens down just a bit. And let's really brighten this up so that we have a nice glow going. And once you've adjusted the curves, we can invert our mask so that you don't see anything. But what we're going to do is just paint out what we want to show. We have our white as our foreground color. Let's really bring down the hardness of the brush um, and bring the opacity down as well, say to about 17. And just keep clicking around her irises so that you got that nice purple glow coming from her eyes. I'm going to take the opacity down just a little more, hardness down, bring the size up so that we can have some of the glow reflecting off of her face as well. Now let me go back to our stars layer and kind of bring down the shine because it's blocking her pupil a little bit. Okay, so that's it for the eyes. So what I'm gonna do is call this our eye glow. And one more step that I forgot to bring up was the outer glow for our brain over here. So I'm gonna go back into our space brain folder and select our brain layer, double click to get into our styles, um, outer glow. So what I have already is this pink glow um, set to normal blending mode, an 80% opacity with some noise, and it's gonna have this nice grainy glow effect coming out of it. And that is the final piece, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. All right, so that's the end of the art breakdown. If you guys have any suggestions for how I could have done something differently, leave them in the comments below. I'm trying to learn as much as I can, so any support will help. You can follow my Instagram page where I post my artwork, and you could take a look at my website. The link is gonna be in the description box below. Thanks again for watching. Hope to see you soon. Peace.